Good evening, or whenever you're watching this, good morning, or wherever. I'm uh, doing a short video because some very nice people over in Discord helped me to uh, use some uh, data control elements and figure out a good way to do a control logic loop. And I wanted to share that in a video because there are Steam guides posted, but they, uh, they tend to be a little too generalized or too um, esoteric. And I wanted to just sort of give a real world example of what is how you do something. And here's my example. I have got some personal assistant robot tor torsos. And I've got this container. And what I want to do is not make more of them than I need. Of course, they, they all go off on this container belt, but I don't want it backing all the way up on that belt. So what I want to do is tell the assembly area that's making these, when it gets below 10, stop making them. When it gets over, a, I mean, when it gets below 10, start making them. When it gets over 100, stop making them. So I've run a data cable, and I'll show you how you do that. That's the data cable, and I have it in my uh, little tab bar down at the bottom. And you can see where these things come out. I'll, I'll even delete it so we can see it in there. You put it, and there's a little green spot to mount it on top of, and it automatically hooks into the data cable. Now I've already run most of the cable, and what's missing here, this space, is the elements that I'm going to put in here and show you what happens. The first element, and it's showing you a pair of elements, are going to be the data value evaluators, which is number eight on my taskbar. Oops, that's eight, number nine. Number eight, there we go. Now, a couple of things that's important. You want the arrows, you can see the arrows on our rotate, see the blue arrows? You want them to go from the source of the information, which is the storage, to the action that you're going to, um, that what you want to manipulate with that information, which in this case is a transformer. Now the other thing to do is you have to line it up on the cable, the arrows. Now these things come with bases, but I never put it on a base. All right, so put two of them, I need two of them side by side. Now here's the tricky part that I forgot sometimes. You then take the data cable, and I know when you hit these things there's light, green lights everywhere, but what you wanted to do is have the data come into both of those boxes. And then when it leaves, it leaves from both boxes. And then you're going to have it go into a data memory cell. And the same thing, blue arrows direction of the um, information. We want it to go towards the transformer. So I put it there and I hook it up with a cable. I could have put it one nearer and saved a little space, but it's fine. All right, so now I have to program these data evaluators. So I press V and hold down the left alt button and press left mouse button and here's my information. I'm going to configure the data system. The input is the number of torsos, and this is the personal assistant robot torsos. And what I said was, if it goes below 10, see, below, and the value of 10, select the constant, and then the number. If it goes below 10, I want it to enable the transformer. So I'm going to output custom value of A. Now it's not important that you use A. Like I said, other people might come up with equally valid ways to do this. I just wanted one that was as simple and repeatable as possible. So you're going to put out the value of A equal to 1. Now here in the other parallel data evaluator, that are parallel, I open it up and I'm going to say when that personal assistant robot torso goes greater than 100 I want you to turn off the transformer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it send out the letter B now you can leave the constant one I don't know even know if it makes any difference 
because what you're going to do is here at the next thing, and that's this thing right here. Again, you press V, hold down the Alt button, and press the left mouse button, and this is the memory cell. And I'm going to say, hey, memory cell, when you say A, you pass out the letter A, and letter A is equal to 1. You saw that when we programmed the data evaluator. If you see B, the letter B, in other words, there's over 100 torsos in the storage box, send out the letter B. When it sends out the letter B, it restores the stored value to zero. Now, here's the last part of it. And then we'll, I'll get a little deeper into that in a moment, but I'll finish this up first. And I have to connect this up. I held off. There it goes. And I know that everything in the world lights up green when you do this, but you're only really interested in that. Now, this transformer, again, v the V key, hold down left, alt, or both alt, either alt, I guess it doesn't matter, and left mouse button. See, I've already entered the information here. I've collected custom letter A equal to 1, and I set it in there. So, with the letter 1, it says, if you see the letter A, turn on the transformer. Well, it's not on, so we know why. It's because the value here is 320, and we were looking for a value of underneath ten, less than 10 to turn on the transformer and then when it goes over 100 it'll turn the transformer back off. And that's a very simple control circuit and it work, I have bunches of them. You can see them here and see the green and orange, green and orange, green and orange. I have them all over the place because they're very simple and they're very easy to use and they keep you from otherwise what would happen is let's say if I, I took a value of 100 for these things when you reached 100 it would shut off the transformer and then as soon as it went down to 99 it would turn it back on as soon as you got back up to 100 you could turn it on, uh, off again and so it would just be a bang bang circuit this is to keep it a little less crazy and then I'll show you here as a final I have one more evaluator I have them all over the place but I'll just show you one where I know where it is um, it's this thing. This, I'm getting, I don't have labels on, but this is CPUs. This is a facility that's making CPUs for me. And what's happening is that storage tells me there's a bunch of how many CPUs there, and, and I got a bunch. So the data comes out from it, and the data goes here through this evaluator. I mean, pair and then the memory cell just like I showed before and the data splits and it's sending out A both directions. In this case it's sending out B because we've reached the maximum so the B is a reset so it resets and turns off the transformer but it also goes out on this data path up to here and to this uh, landing pad where I have a um, I don't know, a gate, I guess you would call it, on this belt. And it's fed by that data. And I'll show you. The disk also has the A equal to 1. Same thing. So it will stay off until it sees A equal to 1. In other words, I'm running low on CPUs. Bring in some from the space station. That's what this is, the space station support. And also turn on these CPU baker machines. And that's pretty much how it works. Um, it's a very, very simple system but it's enormously powerful. Um, you can make an even simpler one where it just looks at what's in the storage and like I said, just do a simple bang-bang system. Uh, but this is a bit more elegant and it keeps, keeps the unit powered off until you really need it, but then puts enough in there so that uh, it can shut off again and stay off for a while. And I think that's all we'll do for right now.